Hey everybody, Pure Mark Cat 23 here with a video on the two number sixes, one of which is not fully done yet, but the one but the one that we originally bought is. This is the Boston and Albany number six, which looks really good considering how it looked before. It was mainly just dirt and grime, not rust that covered this lantern. Um, you can clearly see the BNARR marked on the lid. And the Deets number 6 and they're wearing the lantern metal is extremely smooth. There's hardly no pitting at all on this lantern, which is great. Because, you know, pitting kind of ruins the finish of a lantern when you open it up. Now the first problem I got when I originally got this lantern was the globe retainer was jammed. It was froze up in there because it had been stuck in that spot for so long. But the rare number 6 inch B&A clear cast globe sits nice in here. Uh... The fuel pot is good. Uh, pull that out. I cleaned up the I cleaned up the burner on this one. This one looks really shiny. Uh, it does have some minor pitting on the bottom, but that's no big deal. Um, now there is one portion where it did go through a little bit, a very little bit. It's on the bell towards the edge. You can see where it did get a little bit where it started to pit because that's where the rust was starting. was right on the bell bottom. But when you go along it here, let me see if I can look through it for this direction. Oh, see? Right there. You see the light passing through a little bit, but not very much. So that's all right in my book. It gives the lantern a little character. Reassemble this lantern. Uh... You gotta put the globe in last. That's the last thing you do, or else it's gonna fall through. So, take and snap this up into place. He'll go. Oh, gotta push, it. gotta pull in the tabs. There it goes. Uh, here, let me turn this. There. Uh, stick the clear cast BA globe in. Close the lid up. And there you go. Now the wires are a little whack, a little out of whack from manufacturer, but otherwise this lantern is in top-notch shape now and looks and displays great. Um, now the New York Central number six. The only reason why it's not done, it's actually it's back from the it's back from getting clear from glass blasts. It's just that we ran out of clear coat. Uh, but the fuel pot did get done. But here's how it's marked on the lid, New York Central. I'm gonna try not to touch it as much as I can because I don't want to start oxidizing it. Anyway, because we had to touch it a little bit yesterday. Uh, just the identical exactly to everything. The only thing is that on this fuel pot, it did go through in two very small places. One right there and right about there. I don't know if you can see those two holes or not, but they're there. The only thing that, th that went on the New York Central I thought that was interesting was that right about there, the lid split a little bit, which I thought was really interesting. So, but the red cast globe's still down there. I'll show you that when it's finished, which will be in a which will be later on today, but I'll show it to you tomorrow. I uh, went to a local organized yard sale that was held at the Fifth Third Ballpark, home of the West Michigan Whitecaps, and picked up a couple of things. Here's the first thing I want to show you. is a brass spittoon marked for the Union Pacific. Now, I found out that these things are not worth very much, so we don't know if they're fakes or not, but... We got it for an okay price, so it's pretty happy with it. I'm gonna polish it up. I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Now, in this dirty Grand Rapids press bag, you see the burner, you see a two-piece burner, and a chain and a ring for a smudge pot, which I'm gonna show you. Smudge pot slash torch that I got over the week, over the time. And here's the wick out of this mutt. And here's the wick out of this thing. What a monster. It's at least one inch around, and even though that this was only that was left in there, usually you put about 18 inches of torch wick inside of those things. And once they're burning too, you actually have to self adjust it by hand. So that means once it's burning, you cannot adjust it anymore. You have to adjust how it is. Put it up too high, it'll burn very high and very sooty. You put it too low, it won't burn high enough, and won't we'll have enough soot. So you gotta put it right in the middle. Now, the torch is hanging up over here, but why do I have the torch hanging? Well, I just see if it would hold liquid still. It uh, holds liquid very well, uh, except for one spot, which I'll get to. It's got some, it's got a big, this thing has major rust problem. Uh, 
Very, very rusty indeed. Um, not quite 100% of the manufacturer, but we believe it is DEETS. Uh, I think I can make out a D on top of the burner because it's marked on the burner and the, and the lantern somewhere, but I'm not, oh, you probably just saw that. But I'm not quite confident, I'm not sure where the actual marking is on the lantern because I can't find it. So, but we plan on actually doing this one ourselves. We plan on wire brushing this one and because uh, we think it'd be cheaper that way. We're actually going to return this one to service. We want to uh, turn it into a citronella torch because they're pretty good at that. Yeah, you see dripping. I'll get to that. But uh, but uh, these things though were made during the during the 40s and 50s. Uh, they were used for construction sites. They were not like a you know regular lantern. Now these things, you tip these things over, they would keep burning, unlike your typical lantern, so they were a giant fire hazard. So you had to be very self-conscious where you were walking around a construction site. And uh, these things are weighted in the bottom so they won't tip over, but you happen to hit one of these, it would hurt, because it's all steel. It's a giant ball, essentially. It weighs about one or two, maybe about three, four or five pounds on its own. But full liquid, who knows how much it weighs. But uh, we, me and my dad have kind of nicknamed it the bomb. <laughs> but uh, it's dripping. I have water in it right now to test to see where it holds liquid. It holds good at the seam, which is good. Uh, it's dripping right there, and it does it about every 15 to 20 seconds, which means it's a very slow leak. You can probably see it dripping here right now. Yep. See? But uh, when it, it's, uh, you can't really see it because of how dark and rusty layer it is, but up in there, there's about two, one or two very small, uh, like needle, it's like smaller than a needle size holes. They're like this size, they're like the end of a freshly sharpened pencil, sort of, so to speak. I mean, that's how small they are. So uh, if we manage to reuse that torch, then uh, it'll probably have to, you have to take some gas tank sealer. But uh, very interesting lantern. We got that for very cheap too, so. Oh, unfortunately, it was no railroad, no real railroad stuff at the uh, at the uh, yard sale. But you know, uh, hope to return this. I mean, I know that this isn't really railroad related, but I just thought that the thing was pretty cool. And I actually thought I thought they were smaller than they actually are. But this thing's like this thing. Just to give you a general idea how big this thing is, I'm gonna be turning 15 here on Monday next week, and here's my hand in a fist compared to this torch. The thing's big. I mean. It's a uh, general idea though here, I'll show you next to the spittoon. The spittoon is actually is about 12 inches high. And you hold the spittoon up next to this torch, the bottom of the base are roughly the exact same size. So, but I mean, the thing is, a, the thing is just a giant ball made of steel essentially that can burn, that can have a fire going on it. So, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we're thinking about turning it into a citronella torch. So I think it'd be the king of citronella torches. I think that they'd be pretty sweet and affordable way to do it because one, you can get one, you can get these things cheaper for a new citronella torch made out of you know whatever. I mean, we only got this thing for a ten dollar bill, so and it'll probably take us maybe about another. So we plan on wire brushing whatever. It'll probably it'll probably only take us about maybe another five bucks or ten bucks to restore. I mean, they're only worth about twenty three bucks when you sell them. But uh, especially for this model, this is a fairly common one. I think that this is a Dietz number 750-751 model. I think, looking at pictures, they're exactly alike. But then again, though, there's so many other makers that made these things. So I'm not exactly quite sure until we get the thing cleaned up what it is because I can't read any markings on it because they were embossed in it, meaning that they were stamped straight into the thing. So that means they're down in there and wherever they're hiding, it's covered in rust and grime right now, so. But uh, we can have a water leakage thing with it, and we'll get that worked out, and this thing will probably be returned to active service, shooing the bug away. So, but, uh, yep, yeah, this is all I got going on here for right now. Ooh, ooh, actually, no, I don't. I got one more thing I need to show you. One more thing. I just about forgot about this. I cannot believe I did not show you this. I almost did not show you guys this. <laughs> I got a lantern that rivals the square lift now in age. It's right here. 
It's a Adams and Westlake, the Adams model. Uh, it's in great shape, original finish, original patina, no restoration work done to it whatsoever. And it's marked for actually a fairly common line that we've been having a lot of trouble getting. The Penzi, the Pennsylvania lines, the Pennsylvania Railroad, the PRR, whatever you call it, you name it, I got it now. <laughs> We were originally bidding on one with a red embossed glow that sold for nearly that sold for nearly two hundred dollars, which is really high for Penzi. It had this exact same marking, but it was in a reliable frame that was in top-notch condition. Let me match the sell with this one. Uh, it has a three hundred pot and burner. I'm not going to get it out because it's sort of hard to get out. But it's a clear Pennsylvania lines embossed globe. Uh, the latches broke off a little bit, but I can still open it. It's got the reliable style handle, locking handle, but. Uh, the age of this thing rivals the square lift. The last patent date's 1909. So, but this is pre-reliable right here. This is what uh, was the uh, predecessor to the Ad Lake Reliable. So, it's a double guard too, <clears throat> which also is pretty neat. So, but just another layer to add to the collection. Not too many more that we're going to be getting here lately because we're kind of running out on funds, and it's starting to get around the holidays, and we're going to have to start spending money on stuff. So, but. Uh, considering selling the square lift in the air pilot but we're still debating on it so uh that's all i got to show to you now and i hope to show you that new york central completed pretty soon with this sweet red embossed globe 1223 out